the WBC Bantamweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, the President, Jose Suleiman, Supervisor at ringside, Robert Bussey. Along with the California State Athletic Commission, the chairman is Charles Westland, commissioners in attendance, Jerry Nathanson, Raul Silva, assistant executive officer, Steve English, assistant chief inspector, Dale Ashley. Introducing the officials as appointed, judging at ringside, we have Marty Salmon, Arsenio Garcia, and Angel Guzman. And introducing the referee in charge of this bout, Lou Filippo. All right, fans, here we go. Our main event, 12 rounds, WBC Bantamweight World title. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. Entering the ring wearing solid black trunks from Chiapas, Mexico, and fighting out of Mexico City. His weight this evening is a trim and ready 117 pounds with a record of 27 wins. Nine losses, two draws. He has 16 wins by way of knockout. He is the forum bantamweight champion. He's ranked the number seven contender by the WBC. Please welcome Victor Lacandon Rabanale. And his opponent across the ring. On my left, fighting out of the red corner in this 12-round championship bout. He is the defending champion, entering the ring wearing white trunks with blue trim and fighting out of Youngstown, Ohio. His weight this evening, 118 pounds. His record, 29 victories. Only three defeats with five wins by way of knockout. He is the WBC Bantamweight Champion of the World, Greg D. Richardson. Instructions. Okay, you both had your instructions in the dress room. Just obey my commands. Okay, any questions? Shake hands. Let's have a good fight. Greg Richardson, the defending champion, WBC Bantamweight Division, 5-7. Robin Ali is three inches shorter at 118-117, age 33. Well, 30-something 30 for Richardson, tell you more about that. And he has the weight advantage by a pound and the reach advantage, 71 inches to 65. When we saw him defeat Hibaro Raul Perez to win the WBC Bantamweight crown, he was a little guy in there against Perez, who's 5'10", maybe 5'11", Ruben Castillo. Now he's the taller of the two men as he makes his first title defense. Oh, and a bit of unfinished business. For those of you who had three minutes and 59 seconds in the pool for the singing of the two national anthems combined, you won the event. Two minutes and one second for the uh, national anthem, for the Mexican national anthem, 158. That'll bring you up to date on everything that's transpired here at the Great Western Forum. The House of Upsets, well, there have been some big reversals, including watching the guy in the white trunks when he beat Ibaro Perez on the 25th of February to take the fight. Scheduled for 12. Richardson is a very good boxer. Five knockouts does not indicate that he's a big, heavy hitter as far as punching power. Robin Alves has knocked out 16 guys, including Julian Javier, which not only won the Budweiser Bantamweight Tournament for him, giving him $65,000, but put him right into this title go, looking for the Bantamweight crown against the champion, Greg Richardson. Well, I'll tell you, Greg Richardson did beat the law of averages, but being 33, becoming the world champion, especially as a bantamweight. In the heavyweight division, of course, you've got guys fighting like the, the great George Foreman at 43. Yep. But in, in the lower weight division, that's quite old. Indeed it is. Anything over 30 uh, makes you just a bit suspect. Although Richardson uh, has not been that busy as a fighter. He's had just a handful of fights in the last four or five years. But he's a very good trainer, works very hard, very good boxer. Now, you might get the impression Robin Alley's, that was a good solid shot he landed the left hand a moment ago. But Richardson is catching most of those. And the crowd just a little eager to see perhaps another upset here at the Great Western Forum. 
Richardson, a very clever boxer. Dominales, though, is not showing much respect for the champion, Ruben. He's coming right after him. Yeah, but you know, that, that could be a, a very a big, a terrible mistake because Greg Richardson has his lightning hand speed and, and uh, he throws a jab, a jab well, so if you walk in, you're going to get hit with those jabs. And there's an example of the jab. He's nailed Ravinales with about four unanswered shots. He bounced and move. He's okay, quick-handed, quick-footed. Ravinales kind of a brawler type, certainly an awkward fighter, one hard to fight. press to stay away from him as this bout goes along but he's capable of doing just that all right this is indeed the house of upsets I give you this as the case in point how about Kasima beats Banky for the WBC super Bantam title December of 90 past one Gonzalez you saw Chiquita he's going to be fighting up at the Caesars Palace on June the 3rd Pascua from the Philippines took it and then lost the title to Cobb Castro Richardson and Perez of whom we've been speaking the last couple of moments and then Castro takes the title from Pasqua in his first title defense so four champions have come in making a title defense and the house of upsets has gotten them all will Richardson fall prey to it well we can only wait and see there is Victor Robinale he came from uh, what a survivor he is he came from nowhere down on everybody's card losing to Javier Leon and suddenly, as a nasty a cut opened over the eye of Leon, as I've ever seen, from one punch, and the referee and the doctors had no recourse but to stop the fighting. Victor Robinale, tough guy and a survivor, picked up a big paycheck and a chance to win it all. You know, Ruben, it's obvious that uh, Richardson's going to have to be at his boxing best because Robinale's is awkward. He's going to be coming at him from all over the ring. Yes, you're right, and he's got to use, he's got to utilize that hand speed and, and uh, foot speed for Rabanales. You're not going to have any problems finding Rabanales. He'll be in your chest all night, so all, all Greg has to do is just pick his shots and just throw those combinations the same way he did when he won the title. Well, he keeps making Rabanales miss, but it certainly is exciting the crowd here at the Great Western Forum. Rabanales has him in the corner. Richardson picking him off with the elbows. A lot of punches being thrown, but not much effect. Richardson can't afford to stand in that corner. One of those wild ones may just hit him on the button. And remember, Robin Ollies does have 16 knockouts to his credit. So Richardson is going to have to stick him and jab and move and hit him with combinations, slip and slide, and he's fully capable of doing it. It's going to be a tough 12-round haul, though, and conditioning will obviously be a most important factor in this game. Robin Ollies just keeps walking in, throwing punches. Biggest opportunity of his fight career, Ruben. Absolutely right. Became, and to become the Bantamweight champion of the world, the WBC version. Of course, there's been a few fighters uh, coming out of Youngstown. I know one that's supposed to be here tonight, but he's at home watching this fight. You're speaking of Boom Boom? That's right. And I think the best fight ever come out of Youngstown is the original Boom Boom. His dad? His father. Yeah, Ray Mancini, wasn't it? That's um, Ray Jr. about something. Richardson's and White. He's the WBC Bantamweight champion. Robin Ollies is the man who would be king. Holding and banging away. These awkward guys are tough to fight, aren't they? Oh, they're absolutely... You don't know where the punch is going to come from, Tom. You know they're coming forward, but okay, they could stop. come... Uh, the right hand could come straight, come over the top, yep. up the middle. You never know. Of course, Robinales, as we say, has everything to gain and literally nothing to lose. Oh, oh, good left hand by Richardson. And another left by Richardson. I mean, I'm sure a month and a half ago, Robinales never envisioned he'd be fighting for the battle boy title. Keeps chasing Richardson all in the ring and missing. He'll be back. Out they come for round number three, scheduled for 12, and of course, the defense of the WBC Battle Blank crown by Greg Richardson. He in the white trunks, trimmed in blue, and Victor Robinales in the black. 
commonalities that certainly pleased the crowd. Richardson, of course, from Youngstown, that seems to be farther away than Mexico City. And, of course, the large Mexican-American population here in Los Angeles would be cheering for Robin Ali. And he's excited the crowd, thrown a ton of punches. I doubt that the judges think he landed all that many. Maybe they give him points just for stepping in and taking the action to the other guy. Again, Richardson makes him miss and comes in and pops it with combinations. Richardson is stuck in touch. Make no mistake about it. Got a great chin and he's got considerable boxing skills. You know, Ravanelli threw a lot of punches, as we said, as you said, Tom, but landed very, very few. I gave that round to Richardson yep. the last round. Talking with Dr. Buss and that June 3rd card up at what a card. Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Of course, Virgil Hill, the light heavyweight champion, and Thomas Hearns are the two big names there. But Tom Castro, who has the light flyweight title, will be defending it against Umberto Chiquita Gonzalez, who was at one time the light flyweight champion. And that he's only had one loss, and that of course came in a title defense here at the House of Upsets. Troy Dorsey, number one contender for the featherweight title, which is vacant IBF, will be in against Alfred Brangell, the number two contender, and that promises to be a great attraction. And then Orlin Norris, who is the NABF heavyweight champion, defense against Tony Tucker. So all of that, June 3rd, Caesars Palace, a pay-per-view attraction. It promises to be a real night of championship boxing. I'd like the fans to focus on this boxing lesson that Richardson is giving Ravanale. But now, absolutely correct. I couldn't agree with you more, Ruben Castillo. He's going to have to keep this up now, I think, for 12 rounds. I don't think he's got the, the punch that will knock Ravanale's out. That's for one thing. And Ravanale, in this fight, to me, is assuming the role of the puncher, and you always have to give a puncher a chance. That's right. You're absolutely right. And, and it pays off in the latter round. even with one arm being held is pumping away with that right hand and while he's getting a boxing lesson and indeed Richardson is capable of doing just that left then a right dancing moving slick coming and going never in one place for any length of time Robin Ali's throwing punches blood coming from his nose but I tell you he's had 16 knockouts and 27 wins only five knockouts for the champion so Robin Ali's has the puncher's chance to trap Richardson in his corner, follows him down the rope, pounding away. A lot of punches, few of them landed there. He's yep. missing all those shots. That's right. Nice combination by Richardson. Miss another miss. Another and miss. The bell. And that brings us to the end of round number three. And this crowd will be wild before this one is over. It'll be a dandy. Here's a reminder, Budweiser Championship Boxing's Fight Night at the Forum returns to the Prime Network lineup on Monday, June the 10th. Nice card for you. James Bone Crusher Smith, former champion, goes against um, Mike C. Make your plans to join us then. Budweiser's Championship Boxing Fight Night at the Forum, Monday, June 10th, right here on Prime Network. We'll go over to the champion's corner. Greg Richards. Start that double jab to work Give me a one. Start that double jab to work Well, sound advice to be sure. What else would you tell a boxer? Work that double jab and keep up your combinations. I'd also put a little lightning in your shoes, too. You're going to have to keep moving. Robin Ali's in black. The champion is in white. Up they come for round number four, scheduled for 12. WBC Phantom White title on the line. Richardson has it. Took it away from Raul Hibaro Perez. What an upset that was. Back in trouble He was so impressive that night. And my broadcast partner, Ruben Castillo, said, you know, I got to hang the bag up in the garage again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I want to take the spider webs off my boots. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, he gave a lot of inspiration to a lot of fighters, young and old. Well, he was being warned for um, a low blow, and um, the crowd is strictly in the corner of Robin Alley's, I believe. I think they respond to everything he does. And Richardson is just methodically going along, giving the man a boxing lesson. Whether he can maintain this boxing superiority for 12 rounds remains to be seen. I don't mean to belabor the point, but Robin Alley's is a free swinger who's got some sock. And any time you get in with this is a great fight because of the boxer-puncher confrontation. 
champion's going to be hard pressed to stay away from one of those wild roundhouse rights. But he steps in, hammers away at Robin Alley, pops in, moves, covers up. But he can't afford to stand around in a, in a corner like that, Ruben, and get hit with a careless shot. Yeah, he's got to get out of that corner, Tommy. Spin Robin Alley around. Hit him with a good uppercut. Yes. Spin him around, throw him in the corner, and get his, his, his punches off. You know, boxers oh, taking, taking the point away. Taking the point away. The low blows. He's been warned yep. once before. That's right. And Larry Rosadia. Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Lou Filippo. Oh, good left hand. Stunned Robin Alves. And another left by Richardson. I think Richardson knows that he can land at will with that left hook on Robin Alves. Another left hook. Oh, smacked him again with a solid left. Seeing a boxer uh, stand there flat-footed and start to tee off like Richardson every now and then will do gets me a bit fearful that he might get just a tad careless and think, hey, I'll punch with this guy a little bit. That's yes, exactly what happened to, to Michael Nunn. Yeah. Yep. He got flat-footed, he got nailed. That's right. Lost his title. This is round four. A point's been taken away. Robin Ali's banging away and catching a lot of leather as Richardson stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Richardson. And a considerable boxing skills. Ten seconds remaining here in round number four. Remember, a point taken away. So this could easily be a 10-8 round, couldn't it, Ruben? It is on my scorecard. There you are. That round uh, in the books. And um, unless you thought Robin Alley's was that impressive to get a draw out of that round, it could be a very easily a 10-8 round because a point was taken away. We're in this corner now, and we'll see if we can uh, eavesdrop Vas just a, a little bit. Vas a ser campeón, oíste? Pero pégale aquí, hey. levantas arriba. Tell him to keep the punches oh, up. Yes, it is. Yeah, he's hitting low. Now they're arguing with him. It wasn't that low. But you see, his cornermen weren't in Greg Richardson's shoes to feel the shot. He wants to throw uppercuts and then work on the outside. Tranquilízate. He wants him to calm down. He wants to throw punches to his, to his shoulders and to his arms. Throw straight shots and then work on the uppercuts. Well, that's not easy for Robin Alley's to do. He's a out of right field, out of left field kind of a guy. and Not many straight ahead throws from him. The point taken away could very easily have made that a 10-8 round in the eyes of the judges. At any rate, Robin Alley's having a point deducted. We're out here now in round number five. Richardson, consummate boxer, slick, experienced, got a good chin. Sitting on top of the Bantamweight world and fighting the specter of the House of Upsets. Well, uh, you know, speaking of House of Upsets, I've had three fights here at the Great Western Forum, and I was 0 for 3. Well, I don't think it was because of your uh, boxing skills. I know the last one kind of retired you, I hope. Yes. Continues to press, swinging wildly, missing, but always moving toward the champion. Always dangerous. Trying to connect with that one punch that'll stop Richardson in his tracks. Richardson banging away with the left hand, and the left hand. Nice combinations by Richardson who causes Avenatti's to miss. Away, hits him with a couple more punches. Scheduled for 12. Oh, what kind of shape you have to be in to go 12 rounds at this pace. What, oh, what good boxing by Richards. Oh, he's painting a picture perfect. Portrait here. Avenales. Always coming on through a left hand. But Richardson on the point of the chin. for the most part are, are really quiet, gentle type people. And after he won the title in the Forum Club here at the Great 
Northwestern Forum. I tell you, Richardson I thought that he had died and gone to heaven. It was the biggest night of his professional career. Oh, I bet. He was just, the crowd was pressed around him, and he was enjoying every moment of it. Avenales continues to throw punches. I mean, to defeat a great champion like right. Gibaro Perez, that's, that's an accomplishment. And if the fight... Really, to Richardson's credit, it was never in doubt. He beat him to handle oh, yes. it. ahead on everybody's card. It was really a major upset. Avenales lands a left hand. Richardson still on the go. In the block, he comes back and lands two, three of his own. Avenales trying to work to the body, but getting nothing but gloves and elbows. Boy, I tell you, the pace is tremendous here. We're coming to the end of round five, and it's scheduled for 12. We'll be back right after this. Title go, WBC Bantamweight crown. That's the champion in the white trunks, trimmed in blue. Richardson ahead on Ruben Castillo's scorecard, 50 to 45 after five rounds of boxing. Remember, Robin Ali's lost a point for the second low blow, which I think on Ruben's card made it a 10 8 round. I believe Richardson won it, would have won it 10 9 and got the extra point for a 10 8 advantage, which is a big advantage to be sure. I gave the first, the very first round a 10-10 round, so that's why we have 45 at the other time. Robin Ali's in black. Richardson making his title defense first here at the Great Western Forum in black. Richardson at 118 pounds. Robin Ali's at 117. Yeah. Richardson continues to give a boxing lesson. Mexico City, 28. Richardson, 30 something. You know, if, if, you know how they have the punch status? Yeah. If we could watch or get a punch that on all the missing that Ravanales has done, you see, it would be up there. Well, he's, he's thrown 100 punches to be sure. Per round, I think. But few have connected. Gloves, arms, elbows. to the judges to be the aggressor, but if you don't land any shots, that doesn't make you any points. Well, I would think that's a fair exception, Ruben. On the other hand, I can see where a guy would get a point or two or at least get some favor from a judge for being aggressive and forcing the action. But I agree with you. You've got to hit the other guy and you've got to be impressive in landing your punches, not just wild swinging. Remember, he's a puncher. Nobody said that Robin Ali's was a boxer. Awkward. Sometimes to the point of being ugly is the way to describe it. But I tell you, ever dangerous. We have a friend of ours up to Santa Maria watching this fight. Who's Oh, yeah. That's pretty good uh, hot dog they put out up there. That's right. Have you eaten up there? Great hot dogs. Scuba, you've been up there. We won't discuss it. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's okay with me. Your secret's safe with me, Ruben. Whatever. Bit my food. We're in the sixth round of this 12-round go. The crowd becoming a bit impatient. The crowd, I think, is for the man who would be the underdog, Robin Ali's. And the boxer and champion, Richardson, not getting much respect, but doing a great job. We'll be back. So Chiquita Gonzalez, former light flyweight champion who lost his title here in the House of Upsets to Rolando Pasqua from the Philippines, who in turn lost it to Melchor Cobb Castro in his first defense. And now Chiquita is going to be on the card up at Caesars Palace on June 3rd, and he'll be going against Cobb Castro, one of three championship bouts, world championship bouts to be decided. And I tell you, we saw him in the ring that night, and we see him now, and if he isn't the spitting of of Ruben Oliveris, I'll put it with you, Ruben Castillo, isn't he? That's true. Unbelievable. Facial resemblance is unbelievable. He's not nearly as big as, of course, Oliveris, who campaigned as a bad white and featherweight, but 
He's only about 107 pounds. But boy, facially, they are just, they look like twin oh, yeah. brothers. We're in the seventh round here. It's scheduled for 12. In case you've just joined us, WBC Bantamweight title on the line. The man who currently has the championship is in white, trimmed in blue. Greg Richardson out of Youngstown, Ohio. Victor Ravanales of Mexico City, 28-year-old in black. He's been chasing Richardson all night, throwing punches, not landing as many. There's a pretty good left hand to the body thrown by Ravanales. Might not be a bad ploy if he could work to the body in, the, in hopes of slowing Richardson down. That would be the only way. Just work the body and then start going to the head. If he could get Richardson to stay still long enough. That's right. It's absolutely. He works good with the body, but then he goes ahead. Uh, Greg's on the other side of town. Wow, he's bounding away at the midsection. Richardson is oh, another low, low, low. But uh, Luke Filippo didn't see it. He was screened out. And he won't. Oh, yeah, he did see it. Because he warned he said uh, something to Robin Alley's again. Remember, he lost a point already for throwing one, getting warned, and then throwing another, losing a point. There's another left hand that's low. Richardson, good oh, uppercut. Nice left hand by Richardson. I tell you, Richardson is the epitome of a boxer in the sweet time. So I tell you, oh, Richardson's hurt. He's hurt. that caught him but there you can see the cut above the left eye in the eyelid itself always a dangerous spot let's take another look back at it here in the seventh round oh that was a headbutt was a headbutt that indeed. was a headbutt was a headbutt was a headbutt head was a headbutt oh that was an obvious headbutt right right there, there. pow yeah Oh, yes, that was a definite headbutt. Now, headbutt or punch, Richardson suddenly started to worry about it. He's running at the eye as the round continues. They time out. Yep. They're going to have the doctor come in and take a look at it. It's in the corner of the eye. It is just... Here's Dr. Bernard Schwartz coming into the ring. continue the fight now for Richardson he's going to have to be at his boxing best because that is nothing more than waving a red flag and a bull to show that blood and that cut to Robin Alley's that's going to be a target he will work on so Richardson who not only suffered the cut banging away with the left hand got nailed with a couple of solid shots by Robin Alley's As long as the fight is allowed to go on, though, if they stop it, it'll be because it's stopped. They won't go to the scorecards now, will they, Ruben? Absolutely not. But had they decreed that the cut was bad enough that the fight could not continue, they would have pulled the judges' cards together, added them up, and decided who would come out the winner. I don't think that um, Richardson could have lost them. Because of the oh, no, he cannot lose. No, no. It, now as the fight goes on, anything can happen. The worst that could happen to Greg Richardson would be a technical draw. That's right. And retain his title. Yep. And now he's going to have to be at his best. We're in the eighth round. It's scheduled for 12. Despite a long way from being over. Richardson. Consummate 
boxer. Wada was telling him about his ability to do just that. He got caught with a headbutt and then got nailed with a couple of solid shots. Robin Alves waving his head around, coming from all sides. Nails Richardson with a right hand. point had it taken away for a low blow back in the fourth round Richardson That's a very good observation, Tom, because that is so true. See how he drops yes. it and slides yeah, away yeah. to his right? That's very Never dangerous. Puts his left hand up to safeguard it as he slides away. And, of course, Robin Alves is looking at that left eye and the cut over it as a, just the biggest target in life. Richardson is uh, going to have to keep that left hand up. That punch looked better than it was. will have to be at his best, his boxing best. There's nothing like home court advantage, right? The crowd, Amen. anything that lands, or somewhat lands, they're going to cheer. Yes, they are uh, very much. In uh, the underdog's corner, Robin Ali, probably a big... Folks from Mexico up here to see it. Robin Ali continues to chase Richardson, and the round is over. Here's another look back at round seven, and watch Robin Ali's on the right. And watch as he closes with uh, Richardson, and right there is a headbutt. And Richardson immediately shows it on his face. Here's another look at it, and right there, and there Richardson immediately, with a grimace of pain, then got, gets hit with a left hand as he tries to cover up. All right, here we go, round number nine, scheduled for 12, the WBC Battleweight title. Greg Richardson owns it, making a title defense. His first, and he's in against Victor Robinale. Robinale jumping off his feet to land that left hand. Every time Richardson goes to his right, moving away, why he has a tendency to drop his left hand, and he turns his head and leaves the right side of his face wide open. Robin Ali's has hit him several shots there in the last two rounds. Nice jabs thrown by Richardson. Now he does that all the time, Ruben. I hate to yeah, harp dangerous. on that point, but that is indeed a dangerous mode for him to be in. Solid right hand thrown by Richardson and the wild one by Robin Ali cheered by the crowd. Why wouldn't he go the other way, slide the other way away from that? Well, he's trying to get away from that right hand, obviously. So forget I asked the question, which is kind of stupid. That's the only way he can go to get away from that. Yeah, yeah, except for uh, Ramanaz has a pretty good left hook, Tom, and, it, and he's still in danger, but it's, instead of moving to the side, it's moved straight down. But you see the punch that Ramanaz is looking to knock him out with. The one he's really loading up is that right hand. He has really he's thrown that over his shoulder and behind his back. There it is again. He really wants to hit him with that right hand. If he can. Wild swinging thing. Richardson staggered over his own feet getting away. Well, Richardson in a very defensive mode is going to make this fight a lot closer than it probably should be. Throwing punches and missing. How do you ever get in shape enough to go? We're in the ninth round. So, and they haven't had a quiet moment out there. Uh, no. They ain't going toe to toe. Rich is trying to get away from the punches of Rabinales and Rabinales chasing the prey. He smells victory with that lie, that deep gashing. They've done a very good job on that cut over the uh, left eye. It's right under the eyebrow and in the eyelid. Good left hand by Richardson. That stunned and snapped the head back of Robin Richardson has also got to be wary of the 
Ravenali's in close. Turning his head around, headbutt. Seventh round. Ravenali's chasing Richardson. Richardson making him miss. And miss. And miss. Ninth round is in the books. All right, let's follow the champion back to his corner, if we may. We'll do that in just a moment. Forum Boxing is brought to you by Budweiser. And there's a lot more to come. So open a cold Budweiser and get ready with that clean, crisp taste that only comes from Beechwood aging. Hey, this Bud's for you. All right, we'll go to the corner with the champion. They continue to work on that left eye. No more, sir. Greg, reach deep inside, baby. Reach Time deep inside. Out, Come on. To reach inside. Ruben Castillo was just talking to Lou Filippo, the official. What did Lou say? Back, back in the sixth or seventh, in the seventh, seventh round. round. That was a headbutt. That was a headbutt. The WBC rules in, a, in an unintentional headbutt like that, you would take a point away from, from the fighter that gave the headbutt. So in that round, in that round, we have to change our score and make it 80. I gave 80. the round to uh, Victor Ravanali. That's right, but frankly, you've got to take a, take a point from him for the head, but it's in the WBC rules. Well, then it's got to be an even round at the very Absolutely. worst. Absolutely, 9-9 nine, nine round. Nine, nine. All right, here we are in the 10th round, scheduled for 12. Neither man has been down. Ravanali's in black, switching first right, then left, trying to load up that right hand. The round we're talking about, and we've shown you, camera people and our producers and directors right on top of the game tonight. No question about it. Showed you several views of that unintentional headbutt. And of course, the cut that resulted from it. And uh, from that, in that round, the seventh by Robin Alley really had a pretty good round. Headbutt notwithstanding. In fact, he had Richardson hurt. And so, now we find that the WBC rules say that an unintentional headbutt, as unintentional as it might be, still causes the man so at best, Robin Alley's got away with an even round instead of winning it. Richardson banging away with the left. Nice combination. Robin Alley gets nailed with the left hand. Robin Alley still just wades right in. Understand in case you've just joined us, Richardson is not a knockout fighter. He's only had five knockouts. And Robin Alley trying to work him over. Richardson bangs away with the left. Right. Oh, there's another headbutt. One more. There was another headbutt. Robin Nowley's is swinging from all points on the compass and his head banging away in there. Anything can happen. Oh, that was a shot. Now Richardson caught him on the gloves, but that still had to have some effect, no question about it. Those two right hands. Boy, what a quirky good fight this is. Round number 10. Neither man down. Richardson, the boxer. Robin Ali's the puncher. Left hand by Robin Ali. Richardson standing there with him toe to toe, slugging it out. I don't know how wise that is. Well, he's scoring punches, Tom. Yes, he is. But I tell you, he's not a puncher. He's a boxer. But you, Tom, I think that this is the fight that Richardson should fight. As he was going back, he was getting nailed. Inside, he's not getting his hit, so he's getting hit as much because the punches that Robin Alves are throwing are wide punches. Richardson drives Robin Alves back. What a round! What a round! Toe to toe! Oh, my! What a round! What a fight! <laughs> round number 10. What a fight and what a round. Richardson toe-to-toe -to -toe with Robin Alves, banging away and scoring repeatedly. The crowd on its feet roaring. What a battle and what a round and what a display of courage by both of these men. And here they go for round 11. Crowd still buzzing. Half of them on their feet here at the Great Western Forum. Richardson, the WBC Bantamoy champion. Victor Robin Alves whose last appearance here at the Great Western Forum sent him home with $65,000, which translated into 220 million pesos. Richardson, toe-to-toe -to -toe with the puncher now, jabbing with that left, and Ruben wants him there, wants him inside where he can perhaps do more damage. Sure, because Robin Nottis 
was throwing those wide punches as Richardson's going back was getting hit. As he, as he goes back, watch, watch how he gets hit. See, when he's on his, on his uh, bicycle, if he stays in close, he's not going to get hit with those wide shots. Richardson in white and blue and red. He was cut a headbutt in the seventh round over his left eye, between the eye and the brow, right in the eyelid in the corner. His corner's done a magnificent job on it, though. It is not a factor. Robin Ali's is uh, unmarked as far as blood is concerned, but his face shows the effects of a constant barrage of punches thrown by the champion. Here we are in the tenth round. Richardson toe to toe. Pedaling, he's going to get hit. Abinale is throwing caution and whatever to the wind. Just keeps moving in, throwing punches. Crowd buzzing about this one. There's a right hand by Abinale. Going back to the right. And tried right, backing up, got hit again. Richardson in close, much more effective. Might be strange to say for a guy who's best known as a boxer, but the guy he's out there against is a real brawler, awkward, tough to fight. Inside, Richardson is much the better of it. Clean, crisp, sharp punches. He wants him to, to put the pressure throughout this last round. He doesn't want him to, he doesn't want him to risk a cut. I left it when he said, listen to me, por, if you will, please, por favor. Let's go over to the champion's corner and see what's going on. You gotta win this round, This is it. This is it. You gotta win this round, baby. But this is it. This is the 12th round. And the WBC Bantamweight title might very well hang in the balance. Will Richardson take it back to Youngstown with him? Will Robin Ali's take it to Mexico City? Will the House of Upsets continue to be the House of Upsets? This last three minutes may just tell them the answer to all of those questions. Richardson in white, Robin Ali's in black, Richardson. Brilliant boxer, quick-handed, quick-footed, elusive. Robin Ali's walking in on his man all night long and catching a ton of leather. Seventh round, a headbutt, unintentional. Caused Richardson's corner a lot of concern in addition to the out of the left eye while he was also nailed with a couple of solid shots. Then came the WBC ruling that an unintentional Richardson needs to put in a solid three minutes. He's backing up now on his horse. Can't give Robin Ali's that chance to land the puncher's last hope. That one big shot from out of the night. Richardson not getting off first. Gotta work that jab. Keep Robin Ali's at bay. And as Ruben Castillo so correctly put it, 
And looking back now at his observation and how well it is coming through. Stay inside. Pump those short, sharp punches. Keep Robin Alley's away. His wild swinging is ineffective inside. Those punches look a lot better than they are, but they, the crowd gets excited about it. Just under a minute remaining here in the 12th round of this championship go. Greg D. Richardson out of Youngstown, Ohio. Life begins at 30-something. <laughs> left hand looked better than it was. Absolutely. That was caught on the gloves by Richardson. We're down to half a minute remaining now in this the final round of this championship go. Richardson still picking his man off at the pass. Neither man has been down. Richardson with a good left. Sure, Ruben, what a great observation. How much better he is and more effective oh, yeah. against Robin Alley's inside, isn't it? And should Robin Alley, let's say, not win this fight, he pulled off the same thing George Foreman did. He captured the hearts of everybody. Yes, indeed, he did. There they go to the wire, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's it. This one's over. What a fight. What a great title fight, and that crowd loved it. Money coming from everywhere. Judge Ruben. <laughs> It has long been a, a policy here in Los Angeles. Fight fans show how much they appreciate it by showering the ring with money. Unfortunately, they don't throw much of the paper stuff. So will duck. What a great fight these two guys put on. What a great championship go. We'll be back to find out how the judges saw it right after this. Western Forum and Englewood crowd on its feet still buzzing about this 12-round bantamweight championship go. Richardson and Robin Ollies. Well, will the House of Upsets claim another victim? Or did Richardson maintain his title? Jimmy Lennon Jr.'s got the scorecards of the judges. Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 championship rounds of boxing, we have a split decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I also bring to your attention that these scores reflect two points deducted on the part of Rabanales for penalties, one point for a low blow, and one point for an unintentional headbutt. Here are the scores. Judge at ringside, Marty Salmon scores about 115, 111, Greg Richardson. Judge at ringside, Arsenio Garcia scores about 115, 113, Rabanales. <laughs> Judge at link side, Angel Luis Guzman scores about 117, 112 in favor of the winner and still champion, Greg D. Richardson. The spring is broken. Four champions had their titles taken away here in upset victories by underdogs. And tonight, Richardson benefiting, I'm sure, by two points deducted from Victor Robinales, managed to survive and hold on and keep his WBC bantamweight title. Crowd not really, as we told you, uh, in favor of the decision. It is a crowd that... Uh, was pulling for Robin Ali's, the underdog. Uh, unfortunately, the crowd was not able to score the fight. Greg Richardson and Ruben Castillo, and let's go to the champion at Ruben. Okay, thank you very much. We have chaos here in the Great Western Forum. Richard, there's a lot of displeasure here, but the crowd, I don't think, are aware of the two points deducted by the referees for one a low blow and for another one a headbutt that's in the wbc rules tell us your thoughts well i thought, I thought it was a tough fight close fight but uh, i think i won the fight with consistency i was a little more consistent he had his moment but uh, i was uh, pretty consistent i was close uh, i'm thankful that i got the fight but it was a fair decision thank you well let me tell you something greg we want we want to see a look at the headbutt that happened here in the seventh round, and I want you to tell us what's going on. Yeah, right, right there, his head, his head hit me right there, boom, right there. And um, 
and he hadn't hit me but with his head. So I kind of slowed. Then he hit me afterwards, but but um, I was all right. Well, let me tell you something. As long as you were fighting on the inside, you were very effective. At any time, were you really hurt to the point where you thought the fight was going to be over? Oh, no, no. He, he taught me some good shots, but nothing that uh, took the fight out of me. I'm a, I'm a warrior, and uh, he's a tough man. Uh, it's, it's a tough fight, toughest fight I've had ever. Tell me something. It's a rematch uh, in the makings. Will it be in the makings, or what's next for Greg Richardson? Oh, well, we, we, we can fight again. No, I, no problem. I'll leave that to my manager. He'll discuss all them things with uh, people down the line. But uh, right now, I want to sit back and recuperate, look at this fight, and uh, analyze it a little bit for myself, and uh, then go from there. Okay, Greg, well, congratulations to you for retaining your, Thanks, your world sir. title. Let's go back to ringside of Tom Kelly. Thank you, Ruben. Our congratulations to the champion. And is he a happy man when the announcement is made that Greg Richardson is still the WBC Bantamweight title holder? Will